Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. But one of the things we talked about, talking about the subject of grace, and he, he, came, he said, you know, and he's kind of a Hebrew Greek guy. He said, you know, the word grace can also mean revelation. When you study it out and study the, the, the history of the language, it can mean revelation. And I said, so Paul said that when I'm weak, you know, I, I'll rejoice in my infirmities that your grace, your revelation may rest upon me. Why? Because when the revelation comes, you're able to walk in the light. When you can walk in light, you can walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? Hallelujah. So we're going to walk, we're going to trust God for revelation. Amen? Psalm 103, starting in verse 1, it says, bless the Lord. Well, bless Yahweh. That's, that, that's small caps. You got King James at least. That's a small caps. Bless Yahweh. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not. Forget not what? All his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Oh, thank God for the forgiveness of iniquities. Somebody say Glory. Aren't you glad that no matter, you know, you, you can mess up tomorrow and you can mess up royally, yet God has a provision for your messing up. It's called forgiveness. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Isn't that right? He forgives all your iniquities who healeth all thy diseases. Woo, glory. Not half of them, not some of them, all of them who redeemeth thy life from destruction crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. Now, listen, I know that there's been some things said recently because of some, a statement that somebody made recently, and everybody started coming out and hammering the feel-good gospel. God said he'll satisfy your mouth with good things. She just can't take the baby and throw it out of the bathwater. You know, just because somebody made one statement that was wrong don't mean the whole thing's wrong. Everything they teach is wrong. Hello, you know, are you here? You can, make, you can make a statement that's not right, but it doesn't mean everything you say is not right. right. Amen? God loves his people. God wants his people blessed. Yeah. We're not going to jump in there with everybody. Go, well, they're, they're the feel-good preachers. Well, thank God that God wants you blessed. I said, thank God God wants you blessed. It, now, does, does some people say things you shouldn't say? Yep. And we'll just correct that and go on. Because God said he'll satisfy your mouth with good things. We well, you know what? I found that healing's good. <clears throat> how about you? I said, how many found out healing is good? Prosperity is good. Are you here? You're going home. Biblical prosperity now. Bible prosperity is good. To flourish in the land of the living, glory to God. To be walking in health and wholeness, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. It's a good thing. And he satisfies, say he satisfies my mouth, my mouth. with good things. Good what? So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Yeah. Now I'll tell you, now, now being uh, of, of an older age than most of you, <laughs> not all of you, but most of you, I think Lloyd's got me by a year or two. <laughs> I don't know about Jerry. You okay? All right. But you know, you start getting a little older and all of a sudden you, you, you're starting to feel like, you know, you know, battle weary, to warn. You know, you've been through, you've been through the, uh, the mud and the flood. Hallelujah. But you know what? He said he'll satisfy your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed. God wants to renew your youth. Wants to make you like a young man. Hallelujah. He wants us at 80 years old to be like Caleb and say, look, now, you know, 40 years ago we came in here. I saw this. This was my mountain. I asked Moses about it. He said when we went over, I could have it, so I want my mountain. Let me go get my mountain. Now, the thing is, there were giants on that mountain. And he went and whooped the giant's back ends and took his mountain at 80. I mean, 20-year-olds don't whip giants. 80-year-olds definitely don't whip giants. I guess that's improbable. Like that one guy said, you know, that's an improbable thing, so it can't be true. It has to be a myth in the Bible because it's improbable. Can't prove it scientifically. Lord, help their ignorance. Amen? No, he satisfies. I thank God. <clears throat> that God wants our mouth satisfied with good things. Amen. So if you call that feel good gospel, go ahead and call it what you want to call it. I call it Bible, Bible. 
I call it feel good Bible. Amen. Now I, I get it. If you just if all you ever tell, tell anybody that you know just everything's in life's just hunk of door and there, whatever. But I'm telling you, there's more about walking in goodness and blessing than there is about, you know, walking in difficult places. Well, even when it talks about the difficult places, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And if he had just stopped there, you could, you could just can the feel good. But he didn't stop there. But! Aren't you glad God had a but there? But the Lord delivereth them out of half of them. Out of all of them. Say glory to God. I say glory to God. Hallelujah. He delivers us, delivers us out of them all. Amen? Hallelujah. And so we have here that the gospel, or, or you know, um, where is that? It's not in my notes, I don't think. Let me see here. It's over in Acts. There was a man. Okay. Look over to Acts chapter 14. Now, healing is part of the gospel. It's been part of the plan of God. Brother Hagin said he had an old sermon years ago called um, uh, Forgiveness and Healing, God's Double Cure. And when you start going through the Bible over and over again, you find forgiveness and you find healing going hand in hand. Amen. Go over to James. Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. The prayer of faith and the anointing of oil shall save the sick. And if he's committed any sins, they'll be forgiven him. Healing and forgiveness. Amen. So we see it over and over again. <coughs> Look at Acts chapter 14, verse um, 7. It says, and there they preached the gospel. Now, how does faith come? According to Romans, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. There they preached the gospel. And this said a man, certain man, this is not a myth, you're going to hear that a bunch because people are saying now saying that the Bible's a myth. You can be a Christian and, and believe that the Bible's a myth at the same time. At Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. That means he never walked. Now, folks, that means he never walked. Now, crippled folks who never walked don't get up and walk because somebody preached a sermon. Not in the natural. I said not in the realm of scientific discovery. But see, the Bible's not a book of scientific discovery. It's a book of faith. Amen? And you're going to have to approach receiving from God the same way they did. They didn't approach it from a scientific discovery standpoint or a naturalistic standpoint. They approached it from a standpoint of faith. Amen? Look at here. I'm sorry, I just reverted to my old country talk. Look at here. Actually, if we were down the east further, you would just say, looky here. L-O-O-K-I-E, looky. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Am I right, baby? That's right. The certain man at Lystra uh, sat there, impotent from his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak. Well, back up to verse 7. What did, they, what did Paul say? There they preached the gospel. I said, there they preached the gospel. Come on now. Hallelujah. And he heard Paul speak. He was a crippled man who never walked, but he heard Paul preach the gospel. Glory to God. And what did Paul do? Hallelujah. And the same heard Paul speak, Paul preached the gospel, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving. Now I'm going to tell you something. Glory to God. See, especially when you're in the ministry. But, you know, others can do the same thing. You get around somebody that's full of faith and you can perceive it. Don't mean you got, you know, you had a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. Doesn't mean you had discerning of spirits. You can just get around people and sense faith. Come on. I've been around others, you know, sometimes they, and they get, they're so full of faith, it'll just get off on you. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul perceiving that he had faith to be healed. <laughs> Stop there for a second. Now, the Bible says in the book of Romans that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How did he get, now, it didn't say he got faith to get saved, he had faith to get healed. It didn't say, say he had faith to get born again, to get his sins forgiven. It said he had faith to be healed. Amen. Well, how did he get faith 
to be healed when the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, back back up to verse 7. And there they preach the gospel. Going down to verse 9, there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent from his, in his feet from his mother's womb, who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak. And Paul perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Where did the faith come from? What he heard. What did he hear? The gospel. So Paul must have preached something along the lines of Isaiah chapter 53. Are you here? Are you here? Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. By his stripes we are healed. Amen. He had to be preaching some long, somewhere along those lines about God's suffering servant and Jesus coming and taking our sin and then Jesus taking our sickness and disease. He had to preach, hallelujah, he had to preach something along the lines of 1 Peter 2.24, who his own self bare our sin in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. He had been preaching along the lines of Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17, who says when the evening was come, they brought all them that were sick and all that were possessed of devils, and he cast out the spirits and healed them with his word that it might be fulfilled as was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah, the, the Greek rendering of his Isaiah. Hallelujah. Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Why? Because the guy had faith to be healed. And don't look at me like a dog in a new pan. Let's get into faith. Let's start laying a hold of this with our spirits and not our heads. Let's lay a hold of this and understand that Jesus Christ came to bear not only your sin, he came to bear your sicknesses. You know, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name and forget not all his benefits. Are you here? You're gone home. How many of you here? Raise your hand. How many of you have already left the building? Raise your hand. All right. At least y'all know where you are. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Said with a loud who Paul did. What's happening here? You have to act on your faith. Hello? He had faith to be healed, but he's not healed yet. Are they having a Holy Ghost service over there? Glory to God. Sound like it. Amen. He had faith to be healed, but he's not healed. He had to put some action. Now, a lot of people, uh, Brother Roberts used to take a lot of criticism back in the 50s and 60s when he was on television, and he'd stretch his hand out to the camera like this. He said, now come to the television, put your hand on my hand. He knew he had to get them to a point where they released their faith and acted on their faith. He knew that there wasn't any power in that television set. He knew that it wasn't some mystical, you know, phenomenon that took place where they touched the television set. It was a point of contact to release faith. Yeah. Amen. And so he would say, now just, just come up here and put your hand on your television set. Well, it was a point of contact. It was somewhere that they could definitively release their faith and act on it. Hello. He says, stand up right on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Now, you know what? Um, you get some Bibles and they'll say up at the top of this, they'll say, Paul heals the impotent man. Maybe your Bible says that up there. And that, you know, a lot of the Bibles, you know, have all these little headlines up there. Now, who's, who's got that in their Bible? Okay. I've seen it about Paul heals the impotent man. Paul didn't heal the impotent man. How'd that man get healed? And Paul perceiving he had faith to be healed. The same where Paul preached. He must have preached that healing is part of the gospel. He must have preached healing as part of the gospel because he said the Bible said, he said there they preached the gospel. And there was a man impotent from his mother's womb who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak. Remember, let's go back over this. What did he hear and speak? He heard him preach the gospel. And then Paul perceived he did what? He had faith to be healed. Well, how did he get faith to be healed? Well, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the only conclusion you can draw from all that is this, because Paul didn't heal him because he was an apostle. The Bible goes to extreme measures to do away with dumb doctrine. It really does. I mean, if it just, you know, if it record like this, we were at Lystra and some impotent guy got healed when Paul said, stand up, everybody could go off and say, Paul healed him. 
even in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church himself, he'd look at people and say, go your way, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. Never, he didn't say, I'm, I'm the son of God and I've come to demonstrate to you that, you, you that I am Jesus Christ. I am God's son. I'm the second person of the Godhead. I've come to redeem humanity and you've been made whole because I want to prove to you that that's who I am. You never hear him say that. Go find it. But he would tell them over and over again, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Well, he was being gracious. No, he wasn't. He, Jesus didn't lie. You see, if we can only get it because Jesus was trying to prove in his earthly ministry that he was God's son sent to redeem mankind from sin, he's gone. We can't get it anymore. So the Bible took extreme measures to make sure we understand and recorded Jesus' quotes and said, your faith has made you whole. You see, because if I, can get, if I can get a hold of the same word they got and get faith from the same word they got and act on that word with the same faith that they had, the same kind of faith they had, then I can get the same results. Somebody say glory. glory. I said Glory. <clears throat> so that's why the Bible did this. You know, the same heard Paul speak. See, if we'll preach the gospel, what's the God? You know, Jesus heals. Jesus went round about their villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Amen. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Now, I just get upset with folk. How many people want to turn around and say that devil's healing people and Jesus is making them sick? Yeah, yeah. Would you give me the scripture? Because we have here that he went around about doing good and healing all. And who were they oppressed by? Yeah. The devil. Right. It's part of his ministry. God anointed him to heal. That anointing is still in the body of Christ. Remember, we have an unction from the Holy One. The, the anointing that you receive to him abideth in you. Glory to God. The Bible tells us in James, if we'll anoint with oil, you know, the sick will be healed. Praise God. Go lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Over and over and over and over and over again. Go study the book of Acts. Now, how many got your Bible? You look to it in the very beginning. It says, the Acts of the Apostles. You know what it says? Now, Leroy came up with that one. <clears throat> St. Leroy. He's sitting around, we're going to call this book the Acts of the Apostles. Well, if you'll study it real close, we got Acts of Apostles. We got Acts of Teachers. We got Acts of Prophets. We got Acts of Evangelists. We got Acts of Evangelist Daughters. It's not the Acts of the Apostles. It's the Acts of the working of the Holy Ghost in the early church. Amen. It's, a record, it's the book of history for the New Testament, and it records what the church did when they were anointed by the Holy Ghost. And what is the one thing? They remember they got persecuted in one place, and they went back and got together and started praying, and they said, Now, Lord, grant unto thy servants that with all boldness we might speak your word. Amen. And by stretching forth thine hand to heal in the name of thy holy child Jesus. Y'all remember that? Go, go, let's go look at that. Hold your place here in Acts 14. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is it Acts chapter 5? 4. Okay. All right. Now, you have to forgive me. My Bible is breaking me and broke in. Acts chapter 4, starting in verse... Verse 23, remember they were, they were persecuted. Um, verse 22 says, for the man was above 40 years old of whom this miracle of healing was showed. Now, who was this guy? Um, well, if you go back and study, it's the guy that sat at the gate called Beautiful, I believe. Hallelujah. And um, he got, they got him healed. Are you here? And then, and then they come down here and, they, and uh, he was 40 years old. He'd been, he'd been crippled 40 years, got healed. Verse 23, and being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders said to them. Uh, what did they tell them? Don't preach anymore in that name of Jesus. 
Now notice it wasn't the apostles and the prophets and the disciples who did the healing. There's power in the name. Amen. Amen. Being let go, they went to their own company, reported all the chief priests and elders had said unto them. When they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God. Hallelujah. Well, I lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God. Thou hast made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ for of a truth, against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy, uh, uh, thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. Jesus had to go through what he had to go through in order to redeem mankind. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that they with all boldness may speak thy word. How? By stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders might be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. They understood, they understood that, that healing and miracles were part of, of the preaching of the gospel, part of bringing people into the kingdom. Amen? Hallelujah. And then the building shook. They all got filled with the Holy Ghost all over again. Woo! It's good to get filled up again. Back over chapter 14. <clears throat> and he leaped and walked. When the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voice, saying in the speech of uh, the, um, uh, Le Lyconia, the gods have come down to us. And they called Barnabas, and listen, now see, what the people saw what Paul had done. See, they, they thought Paul had done it. And they called Barnabas, Jupiter, and Paul, Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. And the, chief, uh, the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people. And when the apostles, Barnabas, and uh, Paul heard of it, they rent their clothes and ran in among them and said, that, Sirs, why do you do these things? We are men of like passions and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all that's in it, and who in time past suffered all nations to walk uh, in their own ways. Nevertheless he, nevertheless, he left not himself without a witness in that he did good, and he gave us rain from heaven and fulfilled our seasons, fulfilling our, or filling our hearts with food and gladness, and with these things scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. <clears throat> they got caught up. See, they just got caught up just like everybody else does. Oh, look what Paul did. They're going to worship them and do sacrifice. They stop them. What did you say? We're just people. Yes, Paul didn't say, yeah, I'm somebody. He didn't. Hey, guys, we're just people. This is, this is God. This is God. Same where Paul preached. Had faith to be healed. And then Paul told him what to do, how to act this faith. Hallelujah. See, sometimes we, we, we're, we're, we're just a... We're just an instruction away from getting our answer because we got to act on our faith. Remember the, um, um, the man came to Jesus and said, uh, sir, my daughter is at home. My servant's at home. I'm trying to think. I've got about five stories running through my head right now. I'm not talking about, um, I'm talking about the one where the, the guy came to Jesus and said, my, my, my servant's at home. That's not the centurion, it's the other guy. You know, uh, and he's dying. And Jesus said, go your way. As you believe, be it unto you. What did he need? Jesus, he didn't need Jesus to come lay hands on him. He needed the instruction on how to release his faith. He got a word. And when he turned and went his way, he met his servants the next day. And, he, and they said that, that the servant was healed or the, the, the member of the household, whoever it was, was healed. And he inquired as to when, and it was the same time Jesus said, go your way, according to your faith, be it unto you. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, sometimes we're waiting for the pie in the sky. We're waiting for the spectacular, and we're missing it when we just need the step of instruction on how to release our faith. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Look over, if you will, into the uh, fourth chapter of the book of Romans. See, I think we've shown you enough already to prove that healing is part of the gospel. Look at Romans chapter 4. <clears throat> Verse 
<clears throat> verse 4, 16, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed. And not to all that only which is of the law, but also that which is of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I've made thee the father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God. Now listen, he believed what? Who? God. Amen. Who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now remember, we quote Weymouth a many a time here, you know, who, who, who makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. Here in Romans chapter uh, uh, 4, verse 17. But let's get to verse 18. Who against hope. Believe in hope. Now again, Weymouth says, who are under utterly hopeless circumstances. He hopefully believed that he might become the father of many nations. How? According to that which was spoken, so shall a seed be. Where did he, what was his belief in, in that which was spoken? He received in himself. It was imputed to him for righteousness sake because he believed according to that which was spoken and what was spoken, so shall your seed be. Hallelujah. Are you here? Be not weak in faith. Oh, glory to God. Now, how are you going to get not weak in faith? You're going to have to get into meditating in the word till you're strong in faith. Till you're consumed by it. Till you know that you know. That the light comes on. See, once the light comes on, nobody can take it from you. Because you got it. Amen. I said, amen. amen. You all hear you going home. So you can hope. You could hope. But see, until you get into faith, there's no substance to your hope. Under utterly hopeless circumstances, he hopefully believed. Amen. Glory to God who against hope believed and hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be, and being not weak in faith. Now he laid hold of the promise of God. I said he laid hold on the promise of God. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yeah, yeah. You looked at those bills this week, didn't you? You looked at that symptom in your body this week, didn't you? You looked at all those things. But you see, you can't be, listen, listen to this. Being not weak in faith, considered not his own body by the, uh, now dead, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God. Can't stagger. If you're staggering, you're not strong. And if you're not strong, you're weak. And if you're weak, you haven't got it yet. What do you got to do? You got to get where you're strong in faith and you don't stagger. Then when the word of God becomes more real and more powerful than your circumstance, and you can stand in the face of that circumstance and say, according to that which was spoken, I believe that I receive healing in my body in Jesus' name. Now don't sit around and say, I'm not sick. That's not faith. I said, that's not faith. I just I was listening to, again to dad this week. You know, he, he said, you know, people come to him and say, you know, um, how are you doing? He said, I, according to such and such, such and such, I believe that I received the healing in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, amen. Now, he said, if you go tell people I'm not sick, you're lying. Everybody knows you're sick. It's not running out of your nose, eyes draining. And I, was that gross or what? We can make the point. I mean, <laughs> come on now. I mean, hacking up hot twoies and all kinds of stuff. Are you here? I mean, you're so hot with fever, you're, you're, you look like you're 14 shades of red. The pastor, could you not clean that? Well, you know, listen, what's real? Everybody knows you're sick. I'm not sick. You're lying. What do we do? We stagger not at the promise of God through unbelief, but are strong in faith. According to what? That which was spoken. And in this case, if it's healing, you know, that which is spoken. By his stripes, I was healed. If it was healed, I am healed. I decree according to the word of God, I'm healed in Jesus' name. I believe that I receive my healing now. Amen. So somebody says, hey, you, know, uh, you know, what's going on? I believe that I receive my healing. And what did he say? You shall have. He said that what things soever you desire when you pray. Believe that you see Mark eleven twenty, oh twenty five. 25. 
What things soever you desire. When you pray. Pray is a T-O in the Greek. A-I-T-E-O. And it means to ask. Same word used over in James where it says, you have not because you ask not or you're asking this that you may consume it upon your own lust. Same Greek word. Amen. Are you here? What things soever you desire. I desire a well body. You desire a well body? When you ask. When you pray. When you ask. Believe. When you can see it. Now, Abraham had a wife. I, now, I know some people, some people act weird when I say this, but I nicknamed her Prune Womb Sarah. That woman was dried up. There was no womb functioning there. She's, the Bible says it was past the age of, as it were, with women. She's 90 years old. If you'd done an ultrasound, which they, if they had an ultrasound back then, you're looking at it, there been prune sitting in there. There's no life. Womb's dead. One translator says he, 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 couldn't, he, he didn't even consider his own vital powers. But the Bible says this. He was not weak in faith, that he staggered not at the promise, but he was strong in faith, and he believed according to that which was spoken. Glory to God. God has a word for you. I said God has a word for you. If it's concerning healing, go find the healing word. Get to where you're not staggering. Don't get into denial. Don't stagger. There's a difference between denying something. See, the Bible never says go around and confess. See, we're to speak the word. We're to say what the word says. We're not to deny something. I don't have any bills. You lying dog. They calling you every 30 minutes because you got bills. That's a line. I don't believe those bills. They're not real. Yes, they are. But because I'm a tither and I'm a giver, <coughs> and God meets my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, I call the, I call the need met. Amen. I call, I call supernatural supply. Amen. Because he said he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings on me. Only I don't have room enough to receive. Glory to God. Are you here? You're gone home. I said, are you here? You're gone home. Amen. Amen. So you can't stop. You can't run around and tell folks, I'm not sick. Hello. No, I believe I received it. Now, what happens when you believe you receive it? You shall have it. What's there things you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Now, on Saturday, on Friday, I had to take Shannon over to Verizon. Her phone, the little top button on it had messed up, you know, and, and, and then it, it locked up. So, you, know, you know, on iPhones, you can press the top button and the bottom button at the same time, and it'll reset it. Okay, it'll clear out. It's kind of like a rebooted Windows. Okay, that's the reboot system. Well, if the top button uh, is hung up and won't work, you can't press both of them and get it to reset. So, you know, I'm there, I'm there banging it and all kinds of stuff. You just can't get it. So we called Verizon, went down to the Verizon store, went in there, and the guy said, yeah, this is a known problem with the iPhone. And so he's, he's got it up on the corner of the counter getting it so he can get it to, you know, uh, turn off or turn on or whatever. Doing, he's trying to get it to reset. And the court, but they, they, were, they gave us a replacement phone, you know, because we pay the insurance. So it's, it's, it extends the manufacturer's warranty permanently. As long as you keep the insurance, you get the manufacturer's warranty the long, as long as you've got the phone with them. Which is pretty cool. So anyway, so, you know, we, now we, we needed it Saturday, so we paid 20 bucks, okay? I had to have it Saturday. We, you know, she can't go. She's, got, she's teaching at school. She's got to be able to con contact her students. They've got to be able to call her and that kind of stuff. And um, so uh, I'm tracking it. Now, see, we've got an order in. i got a tracking number. I saw when it left Dallas, Texas. When it landed in Memphis, Tennessee. When it left Memphis, Tennessee. It landed in Greensboro, North Carolina when it showed up at, at the High Point FedEx Distribution Center. Saw it when it got on the truck. And then I saw it when it was on my front porch. And I went out there, and it was not on the front porch. Now, see, God's not like that. God don't show up and say, you got it, and you don't got it. It said, left, left on the porch. 
No confirmation required. And I'm going to walk around the house so that I get on the phone and call FedEx. And the woman says, well, we have proof of, of, of delivery. I said, I'm at 202 Winrow, and there ain't no phone on my porch. And she kept getting a little bit of attitude with me. I said, look, lady. She said, we're going, to, we're going to do a search. I said, call the truck driver. She put it on the wrong porch. You know, I don't have time. Plus, I paid for this. And while I'm on the phone with her, the FedEx truck drives up. The girl who hit the wrong button at one other house and said our house was delivered. I said, it says you delivered this 20 minutes ago. She said, oops. <laughs> I pulled the neighborhood and put all the, pulled all the different ones up for the neighborhood and must have hit delivered by mistake. I said, yep, but we don't care. We got it. Amen. Here's the thing. Now, I said all that because it was, just happened. But when, they, when, we, when we ordered it, the Bible says, you know, what things shall you desire? When you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. I believe that they were sending one out. Got a tracking number. Now, the whole time it's going through all that process, I never saw it. Not one time did I see it. I didn't see them take it over to the Dallas drop-off point and get picked up and, and put on the plane. I didn't see him fly it over to Memphis. I didn't see him fly it out of Memphis over to, to Greensboro. I didn't see him pick it up and ship it over to High Point and put it on the truck. But the whole time, I thought, Shannon's out on the truck for delivery. I believed it was out there. Why? Because they said I would have it, therefore I believed that I would have it. What things shall you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them. See, as far, see you got a new phone. It's coming. We believed that it was coming. And then when, I, then when it said it was there and I wasn't there, I was like, you know, wait a second now. You don't do this. That's not right. But God is not a man that he would lie or make a mistake. And it was actually coming. She just pressed the wrong button, got a little happy with her buttons. Probably did that all the time, just got caught is what happened. It's on the front porch. No, it ain't. But God don't do that. Let me say this. When you believe that you receive, you will have. I said, you will. Now, listen, I was so convinced that we had that package that when they said it was on the porch, I went out looking for it. Because I, 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 I believed their word. I believed that they said they were going to get it there by um, noon. They, they, as they said, about noon. They got there. It, it, it actually got there at 12.55. Um, of course, road construction going on around our house, and that's okay. When we can get to the point that we can go to God's word and go, according to that which is spoken, I believe that I receive whatever it is, in this case healing, and be strong in faith and stagger not at the promise of God. But whatever we desire, we believe that we receive, we have. Now understand this. Now Abram was called Abram from the time God first gave him the promise. Until 24 years later, when he was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the Almighty God, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be perfect, even as I am perfect. And he says, and no longer will you be called Abram, you'll be called Abraham. The father of many nations. 99-year-old dude. The father of many nations. And he's trying to sell off Ishmael to him at this point. He said, it won't come there. It's, going, it's not going to come out of the bond woman. It's coming out of your wife, Sarah. And she should be called Sarah, which is mother of many nations. This is when Abraham was fully persuaded. Up until then, he was partially persuaded. You got to get to the place where you're not weak in faith, but strong faith. That you stagger not at the promise of God through unbelief. Amen. In Jesus' name. Can you all say Amen. Glory to God. So we receive healing from God the same way. We become strong. What are you going to do? Well, you know what? I know it's, it's, it's good to read, you know, uh, um, uh, prosperity scriptures. It's good to read deliverance scriptures. It's good to read, you know, character scriptures. But if you need healing, you better be reading some healing scriptures. Why? You need faith to come. I said you need faith to come. You need faith to come. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Can you say amen? amen? 
And there Paul preached the gospel. Well, in that gospel, if that man had faith to be healed, apparently Paul preached that Jesus healed. Had to. Else he couldn't have got faith to be healed and listened to a different sermon. Y'all here, you're going home. Well, three of you said you're here. The rest of you, did I lose y'all somewhere? Amen. Praise God. Anybody need us to lay hands on you? We're going to lay hands on the sick. Anybody need hands laid on them? In Jesus' name. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.